Finally, Apple has broken itself out of a four-year design rut with the iPhone X. On top of carrying over all the best features the iPhone 8 has to offer, this high-priced flagship phone removes the home button that has defined the iPhone for a decade in favor of an elegant screen that goes all the way up and swaps the fingerprint reader for a high-tech facial scanner. It all comes together well in an excellent phone, though sometimes it feels like it's different just for the sake of being different. The base model iPhone X starts at $999 for 64 gigs and jumps up to $1149 for the 256 gig version with no other option for expanding storage. That's not cheap. It's a full $200 more than the 64 gig iPhone 8 Plus and $300 more than the standard iPhone 8. You can easily spend less on a decent laptop. Because it shares the same processor as the 8 and 8 Plus, the 10 has the same impressively speedy performance as the cheaper models. So what does that extra cash get you? Nope, there's still no headphone jack. Most obviously, the bigger 5.8 inch OLED screen is beautiful and vibrant with support for HDR10. Its 2436 by 1125 resolution is higher than the 8 Plus's 1920 by 1080, but still lower than the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 or the Google Pixel XL. You might not immediately spot that increased pixel density, especially without a VR headset to use it with, but the rounded corners and distinctive notch at the top that houses the camera and earpiece are both markedly different from the traditional square screen. That 5.8 inch number is misleading as a direct comparison to the 4.7 inch 8 and 5.5 inch 8 plus though. Some apps take advantage of the extra space, but the 10's tall screen is more stretched out than 16x9, so watching typical video gives you black bars on the sides. That results in a picture that's actually very similar to the 8. Additionally, the notch takes a small bite out of the usable space, but it cleverly makes use of the corners to display the time, wireless connections, and battery status. In a way, the screen shape is the worst of both worlds. It's nearly as narrow as the 8, but tall enough that the top can be tough to reach with one hand without using the pull-down feature. But again, it's certainly as gorgeous to look at if you can learn to love the notch. The stainless steel edge and glass back give the 10 a feel that's similar to the 8 and 8 Plus and a weight of just over 6 ounces, which is right between the two. And it's just as water resistant. Two surprisingly loud stereo speakers flank the lightning port on the bottom. It's as solidly constructed a phone as you'd expect for the top of Apple's line. Just don't drop it. Replacing a broken OLED screen isn't cheap. Ditching the home button is a kind of refreshing change that, for the first time in years, makes using an iPhone feel like a new experience. The downside is that this phone is less intuitive for someone who picks it up for the first time. You'll likely have to spend a few moments explaining how it works if someone wants to borrow your phone. Adapting to the new gestures of swiping up from the bottom instead of clicking the home button and swipe up and hold to open the task switcher instead of double clicking took a day or two to fully adapt to. Face ID, which uses the front-facing depth-sensing camera to unlock the phone or authorize purchases by analyzing your face, has been a surprisingly good experience. It's easy to set up and overall just as fast and slightly more reliable than the fingerprint-sensing Touch ID in previous iPhones. Where Touch ID often fails when your hands are damp or other non-ideal situations, Face ID has worked through sunglasses, hats, and even partially obscured faces. If it fails once, it's almost always successful on a second attempt, which is still faster than entering the code to bypass it. That said, while it's seriously impressive, Face ID feels like a high-tech solution to a problem that didn't really exist. Touch ID got the same job done just fine. The 10's 12-megapixel dual-lens rear camera is one of the nicest you can buy in a phone right now. It matches the 8 Plus in photo quality and features, including its optical stabilization, 2x optical zoom, and the portrait mode feature that lets you do some cool compositing effects that separate the foreground and background right in your phone. It can also capture 4K video at up to 60 frames per second or 240 frames per second in 1080p for slow-mo. If you want only the best camera in your pocket in a smaller size than the 8 Plus, the 10 is the way to go. Battery life on the 10 is just okay, matching up fairly well with 8 and its ability to get through a day of moderate use, but not much beyond that. Fortunately, it too supports the Qi wireless charging standard, which means any inexpensive charging mat will let you plop it down and charge without messing with cables. But remember, Android phones have had this convenience for years, so Apple is just catching up here. The 10 supports all the same gimmicky augmented reality apps as the 8, but its depth sensing camera gives it one undeniably charming trick of its own, an emoji. They're ridiculous and not really useful for anything, but you'd have to be a little dead inside not to find these virtual toys to be a lot of fun. Kids love it. The iPhone 10 is the first real shot in the arm Apple's line of phones has seen in years. Its OLED screen is gorgeous, its camera is top of the line, and Face ID works well enough that it feels like a slight improvement over a fingerprint scan. 
It takes a little getting used to, but the new swiping gestures soon feel as natural as the home button ever did. But of course, it's also one of the most expensive phones you can buy, which makes those luxurious features exactly that, a luxury for those who can afford them rather than true must-haves. For more, check out our review of the iPhone 8, and for more tech reviews, subscribe to IGN.